Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should still be unlocking and investing in Leonidas at 5511 as a secondary to Guan Yu now that CPO has officially arrived into the game what's going on guys cheers now in my latest live stream we were just kind of chilling okay and i was answering some questions from the people in the chat like i normally do and one of the questions that came up multiple times was should i still invest in a 5511 leonidas so today we're going to talk about that but if you missed my live stream that means you probably don't have notifications turned on or you're not following me over on twitch so make sure you go down there and click the sub button about 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel and my link for Twitch will be in the description below. I think Twitch is just a better live streaming platform. So when I go live here on YouTube, I'm also simultaneously live on Twitch and I recommend watching over there. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should invest in and use a 5511 Leonidas versus a 5511 CPO. And I'm going to be discussing my theory and also my strategy when it comes to allocating both of these commanders into you into your five army uh sort of murder ball now this video is not going to be comparing different battle reports with these two different commanders fighting different commander builds if that's what you're looking for i'm going to refer you over to chiskel's channel uh, he already has done a ton of testing during live streams of an expertise CPO, a 5551 CPO, and a 5511 CPO versus a ton of different commander pairs. And there's just no way that I can replicate the quality of those testings in the time frame that I want to get this video up. And also Chiskel's just I, like, I trust him. He's very good at what he does. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. I'll probably link at least one of those videos uh, of his in the description below. Now, first, I just want to talk a little bit about what each of these commanders does. And I want to set the preface that we're discussing a secondary to Guan Yu okay we're talking about Guan Yu primary and then CPO secondary versus Leonidas secondary I still think out of all of the infantry commanders in the game Guan Yu is the best primary infantry commander for open field fighting CPO is great but this massive AoE with the three second silence the additional damage factor and 30 percent attack is just so good and then it's even better if you have the expertise so when you take what Guan Yu does and you look at at Leonidas okay what is Leonidas doing he has 30 percent increased health for three seconds that's very good for Guan Yu because Guan Yu has no defensive capabilities so you're getting a little bit of tankiness you also deal a 600 damage factor and then if the target is silenced which they will be you also deal 50 percent additional damage factor on the second turn now that's a little bit confusing and that's not actually what I thought the King of Sparta skill did I thought that if the target was silenced it would just deal a 50 percent stronger skill shot onto that target but that's not how the skill works you actually deal skill damage on the turn that it's cast and then on the following turn you'll also see that King of Sparta is triggered here also dealing about half damage so that's all good right but you're also getting 30 percent increased defense and gaining rage 15% faster. You're also at a 5511 getting a chance for a 600 damage factor field when you're under 50%. And when that shield is active, you're going to gain 3% attack for three seconds. Finally, with this at one point, you'll be getting 5% increased damage for five seconds. And you can stack that up to four times with a 25% chance of triggering. So basically what we're seeing here is tankiness on the first two skills, a little bit of skill damage and a little bit of extra rage regen first, uh, and also a little bit of utility here. It's worth noting that at 5511, Leonidas basically is only good with Guan Yu. I mean, I've seen people throw him behind other tanky commanders to make a super tanky commander, but realistically, a 5511 Leonidas or any Leonidas is basically going to be used as a secondary to Guan Yu or not at all. There's really not that many great uses for Leonidas because this basically deals more damage when they're silenced or have an attack reduction effect. And there's just no other great commanders to utilize that bonus on his primary skill. And that's why CPO is so interesting because CPO is super versatile. Just like Guan Yu, all of his skills are active in the open field, which is not that common, right? Most commanders have a rally or garrison skill as well, or some other PVE content type of skill or something like that. So let's take a look at CPO at 5511 and we'll compare the two afterwards. So he has a 2000 damage factor three target AOE, which is huge. And you can have that as secondary, right? If you look at Guan Yu, his primary has a 2000 damage factor and it has to be uh, as a primary commander, right? Otherwise it gets reduced 
for CPO it doesn't matter if he's primary or secondary he's still dealing a huge AoE damage and on top of that he's reducing the target's health by 30 percent for three seconds you're also gaining 40 percent of infantry attack and you're gaining about 25 percent infantry March speed if you're outside of Alliance territory and you also have 10 percent extra health a chance 10 percent chance to deal an additional 200 damage factor over the course of three seconds so that's a total of 750 and you have a 50 percent chance of reducing uh, skill damage taken by 10 percent and giving you and two other targets uh shields of 250. so as you can see here cpo is doing a lot of the same things at 5511 that leonidas is doing right he's giving you some health now it's less health than leonidas but it's constant right if it's 10 percent constant if this is at one whereas you get 30 percent for leonidas but it's only when the skill is triggered for three seconds then he loses that health you're also gaining a shield now with leonidas it's a stronger shield but it's only under 50 percent here you have a chance of gaining it a 50 percent chance of gaining it anytime you take uh skill damage so that's really nice you have tankiness here as well so as you can see here you're getting a little bit of tankiness i still think leo is a little more tanky than a 5511 cpo but cpo just deals way more damage and gives you 40 percent attack with march speed so it's it's no wonder that people are asking should they still use leonidas now before we get into that i just want to say that if you're getting your cpo to 5511 you might want to consider actually trying to get one or two skill points into this skill instead now it's hard to say which of these two skills is better at five obviously health is really nice and the additional damage factor is great but if you look at this the the march speed is actually kind of important if you're a free to play or low spender uh, really march speed is what's going to help you get away from unfavorable trades and i think that if you're a free to play or low spender the probability you're going to be in a scenario where you're in a losing trade is higher so you, you know if you're a free to play or low spender march speed is actually a little bit more important for you because the the amount of trades that you're going to lose is going to be just a little bit higher so that's something to consider um I do think again that the health is nicer the damage factor is nicer but you might want that March speed and of course 20 percent extra attack is you know nothing to uh to ignore that's very very good okay finally with all of that out of the way we understand the situation okay you've got a Guan Yu and you're wondering which of these two to pair him with that's really why you clicked on the video first let's talk about players who are not infantry players who don't have either of these commanders yet okay so let's say you're a cavalry main or you're an archer main or something along those lines right you have all of your armies and you have a single infantry army that you're building and that and honestly whether you're a cav main or an archer main I think eventually you're going to want to build at least one army of the other troop types because you're going to be training those troops and you might as well use them in the open field so if that's the case that you have neither uh Leonidas nor CPO and you're going to be building an open field infantry March I think Guan Yu primary is the way to go obviously and I would say you would go with CPO as the secondary and completely skip Leonidas why is that well I think CPO is just generally better in more scenarios he's also more versatile so let's say in a year there's a commander that comes out that's even more powerful than Guan Yu uh, you can still use CPO secondary to them whereas Leonidas is still probably going to be just used with Guan also CPO is a commander that you can get to 5511 and then come back to later in expertise and get a ton more value out of these last three skills I mean the expertise on CPO is very good with Guan Yu right you actually deal or gain 30 percent more rage over time when the target is silenced that's really huge because that's what Guan is doing right so realistically if you're going to do uh, CPO secondary to Guan you want CPO expertise right that's really what you want it's very very good plus 10 percent more skill damage on guan like yes please okay now let's say that you're an infantry main and you don't have either of these commanders for whatever reason let's say maybe you're a new player and you're just getting to the season of conquest and you're wondering like should you be working on a on a leo for your Guan Yu or should you be working on a CPO for your Guan Yu I would say um especially if you're a free to play or low spender then I would skip Leonidas at this point if you're an infantry main who has neither of them why is this well first of all 
CPO is easier to get as a free to play or low spender. He comes on the wheel of fortune. So you just spin him and hopefully you get lucky. You get a couple eight spots and you're good to go. You have him unlocked and you work on him over time. Um, Leonidas, you have to actually win a mightiest governor or, you know, do decent enough to unlock him and then spend universals, or you have to get him from card King or something like that. And that's just a little bit harder in general. But again, the reason for this is because if you have neither CPO is a commander that is not only good at five, five, one, one, but is good at five, 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 one is even better at expertise and can be used with multiple other commanders. Whereas Leo is almost as good at five, five, one, one as he is expertise. Now I know there's, you know, obviously he's a little bit better expertise. Um, but there's really nothing else you can do with him other than pair him with Juan. So CPO is just more universal. And that brings us finally to the last question, which is if you're an infantry main and you have both CPO and Leonidas at 5511 or better, which of them should you be using with your Guan Yu? Like as an infantry main who has both, should they just be forgetting about Leonidas entirely at this point because we have a better secondary for Guan Yu and it depends on the scenario. So if you're going into like an altar, for example, or some scenario where you're only bringing a single army that is infantry, then you want to do Guan Yu primary CPO secondary every day of the week, every single time. I think that is the best current open field infantry march in rise of kingdoms for sure like hands down does that mean that leonidas's prime is over uh i actually don't think so i think people who are saying that leonidas is overrated that he's you know he's basically fallen from the uh from grace now that cpo is is here um i think that's not really true okay i don't really think that's true uh and here's why if you're an infantry main who has both of these commanders and you have other infantry commanders that you're also investing in such as Alex, such as Harold, such as even CJ or Pakal, you're going to have a lot of different combinations that you can make in the open field. And like, sure, the Guan CPO is the best you can do, but then your Leonidas is just going to be sitting around doing nothing. And it's not like Guan Leonidas is bad. It's actually still really good. And the beauty with CPO is that you can pair him with so many different commanders. You could certainly pair CPO with somebody like Alexander the Great, which is a commander that you get very early on in the game. And is also a commander that many players already have, and maybe even have already expertise. So if you're an infantry main who has Guan Leo, and you also have Alexander expertise, well, great news. You can keep using your Guan Leo and it's still going to be a great open field March. And now you've just added an even more powerful second infantry march into the open field and i think that's perfectly normal even if you're building a third army right then of course you're going to want to separate your cpo from your guan because again these are both very good commanders and you know paired together they're insanely good but you know guan leo is already super good you might as well take that cpo and use him to elevate another pair so for example you can do guan leo and then you can do a, a herald with alexander and then you could do a cpo with uh let's say chook right i think that's a completely reasonable three infantry march build that you could do now of course there's a little bit of of anti-synergy with chook and cpo because they both have a chance to reduce skill damage taken and if both of them occur on the same turn then one of them gets overwritten and they both have cooldowns so and you have to now you have to wait and you won't get either of them for the cooldown duration but besides that i i don't think that's that big of a deal i think that cpo chook would be totally fine right i think it would be totally fine and so if you're an infantry main who already has a 5511 leo and you're worried about you know should you just replace leo with cpo i would say probably not unless you're again going into like an altar where you only are using one march if that's the case then yes of course go on cpo is the best and if you look at something like canyon for example then yeah probably guan cpo is going to be just dominant in canyon right but i think you know saying that leonidas is uh should just never be used as a guan Yu secondary again is probably I, I don't think that's the case I, I just don't think it's the case especially if you already have the Leo like why would you throw him to the sideline and never use him again like you invested sculptures in him you might as well get the value out of him because he's still good he's still good as a secondary to Guan Yu and CPO is great with somebody else so with all that being said my opinions here don't mean anything without your opinions in the comments section below I would love to hear what your thoughts are obviously you know we we talked about most players probably not investing in Leonidas but for those of you who already have him you 
probably want to continue to use them but i still would love to hear your thoughts down below if you made it to the end of the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and even if you think you're subbed go ahead and check because i know about 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed and if you want to unsub later that's totally fine click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video or when i go live with rise of kingdoms and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch and we'll talk to you guys again soon Peace.